As Jim Cummings once said, he is the terror that flaps in the night. He is the tweet of justice that spoils your movie of crime. He is the memory that made your childhood. He is Darkwing Duck. Hey guys, I'm Joe with Channel Frederator, and we've discovered quite a few things about the masked mallard just for you. Bad guys are out of luck, because here's 107 facts about Darkwing Duck. Let's get started. Or should I say, let's get dangerous. <laughs> In 2016, Darkwing Duck had its 25th anniversary. On September 6, 1991, the first episode, Darkly Dawns the Duck Part 1, aired on ABC. However, it technically premiered on March 31st, though that was considered just as a sneak preview. Darkwing Duck lasted until September 1992, running for three seasons with 91 episodes in just one year. It's actually odd that the show had 91 episodes. Most syndicated shows only had 65 or 66 episodes, but ABC loved the show so much that they ordered another season specifically for the Saturday morning block, and because that did so well, they ordered a season yet again. To prepare for the premiere of Darkwing Duck, there was a promotional rap music video made in order to get people excited for it. They did this a lot for many Disney afternoon shows back in the day. Tad Stones is the creator of Darkwing Duck. He also worked on series such as DuckTales, Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers, Disney's Adventures of the Gummy Bears, Aladdin, Buzz Lightyear of Star Command, and Hercules. A big source of artistic inspiration for Stones came from a memory he had as a child, going to Disneyland and buying the original Art of Animation book, all about the process of making Sleeping Beauty. The creative team wanted to propose a reboot of the Rocky and Bullwinkle show. They developed Darkwing Duck as a last-minute replacement when they realized Disney did not actually own the rights to Rocky and Bullwinkle. Whoops, crisis averted. The show was pitched as Double O Duck, and based on an episode of DuckTales by the same name. It must have been a really good episode. The name didn't go through, however, because Disney got a letter from Cubby Broccoli, otherwise known as Albert R. Broccoli, the producer of many James Bond films. They couldn't use the name because the Bond franchise legally owned the term Double O. The new name was to be decided by a studio contest. The winner was writer-producer Alan Burnett for 500 bucks. Burnett actually only suggested the term Darkwing. Stones was the one who added Duck onto it. Burnett later went on to become the story editor and producer on Batman the Animated Series. So even though they were not allowed to use Double O Duck, Darkwing Duck references Bond many times. In the episode In Like Blunt, the name Derek Blunt is a reference to Derek Flint who is a parody of James Bond in general. Live and Let Spy and Goldfeather reference Live and Let Die and Goldfinger, respectively. Actually, as an inside joke in the episode A Duck by Any Other Name, DW suggests renaming himself Double O Duck for his new secret identity, to which Launchpad remarks, Seems kinda silly. You tell him, Launchpad. Also, while Launchpad was in the original Double O Duck Tales episode, he was not intended to be in the Darkwing Duck series at first. Instead of having a sidekick, Darkwing Duck was supposed to have a Doc Savage type of group. Actually, Launchpad was made to be a better pilot in Darkwing Duck. Stones mentioned that he crashed all the time in DuckTales. The show itself was quite revolutionary for its time, specifically in regards to how often it broke the fourth wall. The creative team took this element from older Disney cartoons, when characters lived in the moment and spoke to the audience quite a bit. Darkwing's catchphrase, let's get dangerous, was coined by Stones. When he first came up with it, he knew they would have to put those three words in every single episode. But Darkwing's famous catchphrase formula actually comes from lines the writers wrote for Launchpad first, where he's pretending to be Darkwing and says, I am the road salt that rusts the underside of your car. They liked it, kept coming up with new ideas, and it became a running gag. Toby Shelton is credited for completing the character design for Darkwing Duck, but Stone started him off by giving him a sketch of a duck dressed similar to the way he saw the shadow. Who's the shadow? He's a character from Pulp Fiction novels from the 1930s, which Stones has cited as one of his inspirations for the show. Shelton worked at DreamWorks when he publicly shared his original drawings of Darkwing, and recalled being surprised at how many of his staff members were fans of the show. He now works at Disney Animation Studios. Artist Mike Peraza came up with the idea of Darkwing Duck riding his motorcycle up the cable to get to his secret hideaway. If you look up Darkwing Duck on his blog spot, you can see all sorts of concept artwork for the series. The architecture in Darkwing Duck is classified as Dark Deco, a term coined by the 1992 animated Batman series. It is especially prominent in the title cards, which show Art Deco elements shaded by a noir ambience. Perfect for our feathered crusader, Darkwing Duck's design is also an homage to Daffy Duck's The Scarlet Pumpernickel. While Darkwing Duck is trying to find a new identity, he comes up with the name Scarlet Bafflequack. Not sure which one I like better. Another relation to Warner Brothers is an homage to the cartoonist Tex Avery in The Incredible Bulk. At the end of the episode, there is a reference 
directly to his cartoon, King Size Canary. Not to mention that there is a character named Mr. Avery in the episode. In Darkwing Duck's first on-screen adventure, Darkwing fights a character named Moliarty, which, yes, has a reference to Sherlock Holmes' arch-nemesis, Moriarty, and keeps him from pulling the moon out of orbit, thus casting the Earth into total darkness. You may have noticed that Goslin was also there, even though it was not yet revealed how Darkwing adopted her yet. Later on, this backstory was revealed in a real episode titled That Sinking Feeling. This episode is also considered to be the official pilot of the show. The idea for Goslin's character came to be when Stones thought, what if Batman had a little girl who refused to stay at home? He felt she would become the heart of the show, and feels that's what elevated the series overall. Plus, she's Stones' favorite character. Goslin was slightly based off of what Stones felt his own daughter, who was two at the time, would grow into. Wonder if she did turn out that cool. I mean, probably. The show never confirmed who Goslin's parents were, and according to Stone, it will never be revealed. He'll leave that to the fanfiction writer's imagination. Goslin also chose an alias name at one point. In that sinking feeling, she suggested she was considering fighting crime under the name of the Scarlet Quackat. She finally did fight crime in Dances with Bigfoot as the Crimson Quackat. This alter ego never appeared again, but in a later episode, her crime-fighting counterpart returns as the Quiverwing Quack. Which name do you like more? Stone said that while Darkwing was in production, the premiere of Tiny Toons helped make the show more wacky, since they saw how the audience positively responded to Tiny Toons. As popular as the show was with families, after the episode Hot Spells aired, the network received a lot of letters complaining about the appearance of Beelzebub. They were especially upset that Goslin made a deal with the devil, and the episode was later banned. Hot Spells also features a cameo of the magic brooms from Fantasia. Do you remember the episode? Did you catch the brooms' appearance? And how are they related to Beelzebub? The world may never know. Our beloved hero, Darkwing Duck, was voiced by the famous Jim Cummings, who said he has a very special place in his heart for Darkwing. Cummings had opportunities to improvise and create his own unique portrayal of the character, which might explain why the dourly dressed hero has such a colorful personality. Cummings refers to Stones as Darkwing Duck's father, but he refers to Jenny McSwain, the dialogue director who helped him develop the voice, as his mother. It's a big happy family. In fact, Jim Cummings loves the show so much that in 2013, Funny or Die did a comedy sketch where Cummings attempts to kickstart a Darkwing Duck movie all by himself, which included animating and voicing all the other characters too. Go see it. Occasionally, when Stones and Jim Cummings are in panels together, Jim Cummings takes on the persona of Darkwing entirely. Take, for example, the 25th anniversary panel at Momocon. He is truly a dedicated voice actor, unless the truth is he actually is Darkwing Duck himself. Speaking of, Darkwing Duck completely denies that there are people who created him, write him, or that Jim Cummings actually voices him. In his own mind, he's 100% real. The show had countless popular voice actors for the other roles. These included Christine Cavanaugh as Goslin, Katie Lee as Honker, Dan Castellaneta as Megabolt, Frank Welker as Lilliput, Eddie Deason as Mouth, and many, many more. Darkwing Duck was the first afternoon Disney show that was pretty much a parody of other TV series and literature that inspired Stones, among which are The Shadow, Doc Savage, The Green Hornet, The Flash, and Batman. St. Canard is quite a lot like Gotham City. When it comes to Batman, Darkwing Duck references The Dark Knight Returns specifically. This can be seen in the original comic cover of the Darkwing Duck Boom Comics. Similar to Batman, Darkwing Duck has a different real name, Drake Mallard. Did you know that? No? Well, then it's a good disguise. The name Drake Mallard is obviously a reference to the most common type of duck there is, a mallard, but it's also a reference to Kent Allard, which is the real name of the Shadow. If you needed any more proof that Darkwing is basically a duck version of Batman, so... Bat Duck. Check out this drawing that Stones made of Darkwing Duck and Batman. Stones mentioned that another big inspiration for the show was the Silver Age of Comics, a term used for superhero comics from 1956 to 1970. Like Stones, Darkwing Duck's inspiration comes from comics too, his favorite childhood hero being Super Pig. He idolized him while he was a kid due to being bullied a lot. Darkwing Duck learned a lot from his great-great-aunt, who was a sideshow contortionist. Specifically, he learned skills like Carpathian bone dislocation, thumb wrestling, and Micronesian breath control. However, he didn't learn everything from her. He also trained under Goose Lee to learn combat. An obvious shout out to martial artist and actor Bruce Lee. At one point, the creative team considered putting Darkwing Duck in spandex like most superheroes, but as they didn't know how to work around the, let's say, bulge that many superheroes get in those stretchy suits, so they decided to keep him pantsless. Not to mention that ducks don't usually wear pants. Tad Stone's favorite villain is Megabolt. Who is yours? Don't forget about Negaduck. Megabolt didn't always have a cool name. His original name was 
dim bulb. Seriously? Would you be afraid of someone who called themselves dim bulb? Negaduck's origin story is that Megavolt split Darkwing Duck into Posituck and Negaduck, using his Tron splitter to separate the Positrons and Negatrons. We swear, it's in an episode, go look it up, it's called Negaduck. Stones compared Negaduck to Batman's arch nemesis. How so? Much like the Joker always comes back, Negaduck just came back whenever they felt like writing him in. Negaduck's costume colors were based on Reverse Flash, Flash's evil counterpart. Stones felt that those colors always symbolized the evil doppelganger. In fact, there's another reference to the Flash in the episode, Going Nowhere Fast. In it, there are two doctors named Barry and Alan. And for those who don't know, Barry Allen is the Flash's real name. Stones also wanted to explore Posiduck's character, but ABC executives made the call not to. In the end, Stones felt like it was probably a good call. However, Negaduck has his own team called the Fearsome Five. It consists of himself, Megavolt, Quackerjack, Bushroot, and Liquidator. Though when Negaduck later disappears, the group is renamed to the Fearsome Four. Speaking of Liquidator, he speaks pretty funny, doesn't he? Well, that's because when writing his dialogue, the team made sure that he usually spoke in advertising slogans. There were talks about creating a spin-off show based on the Fearsome Five's rivals, who were called Justice Ducks, a reference to DC's Justice League. The show would have featured Darkwing Duck and Gizmo, with new heroes replacing Morgana Macabre, Degmut, and Neptunia. There is no official way to spell Morgana's last name, due to it being spelled differently in both licensing and marketing. Stones always assumed it was spelled M-A-C-A-W-B-E-R. Morgana's spooky design was inspired by women from the horror genre. Think Bride of Frankenstein or Morticia Adams. Do you see it now? Stones has mentioned that he could see a hilarious series where Morgana and Darkwing got married and have children. Slice of life of Darkwing Duck? Uh, yes please. Stones created Gizmo Duck for the DuckTales, who later came into Darkwing Duck. Gizmo Duck was first named Robo Duck, as inspired by Robocop. The name Robo Duck is still used in various other countries though. Although Gizmo and Launchpad are both in DuckTales and Darkwing Duck, Stones has said that Darkwing Duck is not a spin-off of DuckTales. It takes place in an entirely different universe. On the other hand, there is a four-part comic book story called Dangerous Currency by Disney illustrators. It's centered around a full-on crossover between the two series. Launchpad also references his adventures with Darkwing Duck several times in the Uncle Scrooge comics by Boom Studios. So either he can travel through parallel worlds, or it is the same universe. Might be better not to think about it too hard, or maybe the comics are just not canon to the show. Speaking of the Boom comics, writer Ian Brill and James Silvani were awed with how many people noticed their work. For example, when they went to San Diego Comic-Con, they were surprised that people kept asking for their autographs, since they thought that they'd just be strolling around the convention quietly. DuckTales is also referenced in Tiff of the Titans, when Gizmo Duck makes his first appearance on the show, mentioning McDuck Manor. Even Scrooge McDuck makes an appearance on a sign welcoming people to Duckburg. Shush, the secret peacekeeping organization, is how Darkwing Duck brings in the cash, in case you were ever wondering. If you didn't catch it, Shush is a reference to S.H.I.E.L.D., Marvel's law enforcement agency. Fowl, short for Fiendish Organization for World Larceny, is the evil organization. It's run by three mysterious figures in the show, but it seems Disney's merchandising didn't get the memo. So they featured Steelbeak as the group's leader. You can see this in T616's game plot, which is all about defeating Steelbeak, the unmasked operator of Fowl. Darkwing Duck has had quite a few games on the NES, Game Boy, and the TurboGrafx-16, which is Tiger Electronics' handheld console. Not to mention there were games made for many mobile phones. The Darkwing Duck game for the console, TurboGrafx-16, is notoriously difficult, to the point where the game critic Angry Video Game Nerd considers it the worst game ever made on the system. But people wanted to play Darkwing games on other consoles as well, so there was also a bootleg Darkwing Duck game for both the Sega Mega Drive and the Genesis from Russia. But there's good news! Capcom brought back the Darkwing Duck game this year in a digital compilation of games based on many other afternoon Disney shows. There were plans to bring Darkwing Duck into Disney Infinity, but then it fell through. Why? He lost his chance in a poll against Olaf from Frozen. Not cool, guys. Not cool. In April 2016, Volume 1 of the new installment of Darkwing Duck comics was released by Joe Books. It seemed they stopped at Volume 8, which came out February 2017. While there is no official statement, comic book writer and editor Aaron Sparrow has tweeted hashtag save Darkwing many times in reference to the comic books. In the first issue, Orange is the New Purple, the Main Street Electrical Parade from the Disney Parks is referenced. What's interesting is that the issue came out in April 2016, and the announcement for the return of this parade was in August of the same year. Did it predict it, or was it all just a hint? In the comic, there was also a painting of two dinosaurs fighting in the background. This is referencing Ford's Magic Skyway, which was created by Disney in the 1964 World's Fair. You can see animatronics of these dinosaurs at Ellen's Energy Adventure in Disney World, a 
subtle little nod, but we caught on. And here's a fun one. In issue 8 of the comic books, you can spot a Waldo, or for you British fans, Wally, that looks a lot like Darkwing Duck. Looks like Waldo's making his rounds. Did you spot him? In 1991, Darkwing Duck replaced the gummy bears in Mickey's Magical TV World at Walt Disney World during the stage show's 20th anniversary, so he even made his way into the parks. He's made several live-action appearances since then. In 2013, he resurfaced in Disneyland Paris at the Disney Dreamers Everywhere show. Then, in September 2014, Darkwing and Launchpad appeared in Disney California Adventure during an annual passholder event. Why don't I have an annual pass? Unfortunately, it's not possible to meet Darkwing Duck at the parks anymore. The last time he made a rare visit was in 2016 for the Disney Vacation Club's 25th anniversary. The love for classic Disney films and characters is shown throughout the show. In A Star is Scorned, in order to get into a filming studio, Darkwing dresses as Donald Duck and Goslin dresses as Louie. There is a nod to Pinocchio in Something Fishy. After a whale eats Darkwing Duck, it is provoked to sneeze due to internal smoke. Hmm. It's extremely similar to how Pinocchio and Geppetto escaped from Monstro. Darkwing Duck also references the Great Mouse Detective in several episodes. For example, Darkwing presses a button down on a statue of Basil of Baker Street to activate his spinning chairs. Plus, in the episode called Flim Flam, Andy Ape and Toddler Timmy are parodies of Roger Rabbit and Baby Herman. Darkwing Duck also paid tribute to his fellow afternoon block neighbors. In Flim Flam, he's seen wearing a tailspin shirt after he almost gets sliced in half. As far as other properties referencing Darkwing Duck and not the other way around, Genie transforms into the masked caper in My Fair Aladdin in the Aladdin TV series. In appreciation of other series, there is nothing more 90s than parodying Twin Peaks. Even the name of the episode is on point, Twin Beaks. In it, Honker's aunt is designed after Nadine Hurley and has her own diner based on the Double R Diner. Bushroot's fake corpse is wrapped in plastic, much like Laura Palmer's. Launchpad also remarks, the cows are not what they seem, referencing the owls are not what they seem line from the show. A Brush with Oblivion is set in a museum seemingly based off of the Guggenheim. The episode even shows real pieces of artwork, like American Gothic from 1930, The Persistence of Memory from 1931, and there are pieces based on artists like Brock, Pierre Mondrian, and Jackson Pollock. In Fungus Among Us, there is a reference to M.C. Escher's extremely famous lithograph print, Relativity. We'll give you a hint where to spot it. Staircases. Got it? There are apparently also several hidden Mickeys scattered throughout the show. Have you spotted any? Let us know in the comments below. The other Disney Afternoon series occasionally referenced Darkwing Duck 2. You can see this in Goof Troop, where Quacker Jack's logo is on Max's watch. Plus, Darkwing Duck was on the cover of a booklet in Goof Troop. Not to mention Darkwing and Goslin appear on Pete's TV at some point. Looks like the Goof Troop staff was full of big Darkwing fans. In the Bonkers episode, Do Toons Dream of Animated Sheep, Bonkers dreams about Darkwing hosting an award ceremony. Of course, Bonkers wins in this dream, and Darkwing is upset about not even having been nominated. If you want to be as cool as Darkwing, and who doesn't, you could own your own gas gun. This one only shoots bubbles and is technically just a toy, but it's still pretty fun to brag about. There was even a Pizza Hut promotion in the 90s that featured Darkwing Duck. For just $2.99, you got a personalized kid's pizza and a bunch of cool merchandise, including a crime fighter kit. If your VCR no longer works, fear not, Darkwing Duck was released on DVD in 2006. But unfortunately, even if you own both box sets, they're still missing 37 episodes. Time to start a petition. Darkwing Duck won an Annie for Jim Cummings' voice work and was nominated for Best Animated Television Program in 1992. The show was also nominated for five categories in the Daytime Emmy Awards, as well as receiving another nomination for the Outstanding New Animated Series in the Young Artist Awards. In 1993, Darkwing Duck was nominated again for the Daytime Emmy Awards in three categories and for the Kids' Choice Awards for Favorite Cartoon. If you were curious, apparently 18% of St. Canard's citizens said that they were happy DW is protecting them, 12% thought he was a menace, and 30% thought he was a glory-seeking menace. The other 40%? They didn't even know who he was. A few years ago, there was a rumor that Darkwing Duck would be returning to the screen in 2018. Sadly, that turned out to be part of an April Fool's joke prank online. Ugh, there go my hopes and dreams. Supposedly, if the new DuckTales does well, it will hopefully open the door to looking at older properties and reinventing them. Once again, I'm Joe, and thank you for watching 107 Facts about Darkwing Duck. Who's your favorite character? Did we miss anything? Comment below and let us know. Don't forget to click the bell icon to become part of the notification squad. We have videos dropping every day, so make sure to subscribe to Channel Frederator.